All right, so we have one physical heart in our body, one in between our, our shoulders here, the center of our chest. That breathe, when, we, uh, when it pumps, we get blood and oxygen moving throughout the body. We have two other hearts, so to speak, that help get circulation through the body. Your diaphragm, we do this bending and twisting and squeezing, and I ask you to pull your stomach muscles back, that helps with the circulation also. Third one is our ankles, calves, and the feet. When we do this, we're helping the circulation by letting the feet and the ankles and calves work like a pump. So with this whole set, a lot of circles, a lot of waves, those three areas, the real heart, your diaphragm, your calves and ankles, when they all get enacted, you have that much more circulation that the heart, the main heart, doesn't have to do all the work. Plus, you're working on your balance, coordination, all those things too. The next set, again, is about circles. So here's this ball, like a basketball. I'm going to bring it up, I'm going to touch my navel. From here, chin up, I'm touching my navel with the ball. As I bring the ball away from me, I'm going to bring my chin down, I'm going to move the ball in a circle. Each time, the ball is going to come up a little bit higher. Now I'm going to go in front of my solar plexus, base of my sternum. Ball comes up, chin is up. Bring the ball out, and then around my back with the ball. So again, the back is getting that wave from top to bottom, bottom to top. From here, I'm going to come in front of my chest. Back is arched, bring the ball out a little bit, and breathe out. So if you look at it from the side now, it's really an oval. Next one is in front of my throat ball comes out, I can round my spine once again. Next one's in front of my face. Inhale, exhale. There's seven of them. Next one is just above my head. Right here I'm arching my back and then extending my shoulders out. Exhale. The seventh one is if I'm holding that basketball in between my palms, I'm trying to touch the ceiling with it. So I'm stretching up a bit, feel tension in my back and shoulders, and then out, and then breathe out as you come down. So each breath, it gets deeper and deeper with the circle. So back to the first one. Circle, in front of your navel. Second one, bring it up, in front of your solar plexus, and breathe out. Next one is in front of your chest or your heart. And breathe out. So my chin travels with the ball. In front of my throat, if I had the ball there, it would hit my throat. And then out. And breathe out. Next one, I'm rolling it up and then over my face. Out and breathe out. Next one, roll it up just above the head. You should feel your back a little bit as you arch. And then extend and breathe out. All the way up to the ceiling. Touch the ceiling with the ball. Lengthen your spine by extending out. And breathe out. Okay, how much time we got? A couple more exercises here. Let's go a little wider. Then I'm going to hold the big ball once again. It's gotten bigger. Instead of a basketball now, it's like a beach ball. It's big. I'm going to turn my torso to the left and make a circle. Like the circle is extending away from my body. And then I bring it back in. And wherever my hands go, my hips shift. So I'm going to the left, my hips shift to the left. Come across the center, to the right, my hips shift to the right. When I reach out, I'm going to inhale in. When I come back, I'm exhaling. Reach out in. Squish your stomach and breathe out. My fingers are loose, my arms are relaxed, elbows a little bit bent. In. Out. Now, if I lift my heels, each time when I shift, my feet can turn a little bit. Like if I'm going to the right, my toes go to the right. I go to the left, they go a little bit to the left. What that allows me to do is keep the knee going the same way the toes are going. Because if my foot is just planted and my knee is going all around like this, the knee starts to get a little weak or a little bit overstretched 
going sideways. So wherever my toes go, I want my knees to be going that same direction. So let's do a couple more on this side and then we'll switch. So I'm going left, toes go to the left, knees go to the left. And then to the right. In. Out. In. Out. And then we can go the other way. Now we're going counterclockwise. Squeeze the breath out when you come close. In. Out. In. Out. So for now, my eyes are just following my hands. My focal point is where my hands are at. My eyes just kind of follow that path. A couple more times. We'll go on one more exercise, and then that'll be it for now. Breathe in. Out. In. Out. Okay, we can slide in a little bit. So our feet come closer about shoulder width or hip width. I'm gonna have this circle going again. We're gonna go clockwise. So I got this like a cylinder or a table or something to the right here where I'm gonna bring my arm all the way around the edge of it and then back. Inhale when you reach, exhale when you come back. In, out. Now, some of your circles, I'm guessing, look like triangles or maybe even more of a straight line because that's what happens. It's just, it's hard to get that perfect circle as you're doing it. But ideally, you're, in your thought, you're thinking of it being a circle. Let's turn our feet to the right. So my knees and toes are going the same direction. From the hips down, that stays there. My upper body keeps this circle going. So you get a little twist, your upper body in, out, in, out. Now if we can do one circle, I want you to try to do both circles at the same time, both arms. In, out. So I'm holding that ball, and they're going together, out, in, out. And if you can do that, we're gonna make the hands go opposite, in, out. So I get the top one, and then the bottom one does this. In on the right, out on the left. It was so much easier when I had you just moving the one arm, right? One arm is okay. Two arms together, not bad. When we start to do two different things, once again, your, your awareness gets challenged a little bit more. Inhale on the top, exhale with the bottom circle. In, out, in, out. Let's shift over to the left. This will be the last one, then we'll take our, our break. So my right hand just stays at the side or on your hip, either way is fine. Now I'm going counterclockwise. Just getting the arm moving. In, out, in, out. If that's fine, we turn to the corner with our toes and our knees and our hips. Still getting a little bit of a twist with the spine and the shoulders. In, out, in, out. If that's fine, both hands hold the ball. In, out, in, out. If that's fine, then we split them. In, out, in on the left, out on the right. Now I'm trying not to bend over much like this from my back, but I want to compress from my knees and my hips. So I'm kind of straight up, and then I crunch. In, out, in, out, in, out. Let's try two more. In, out, in, out. To finish up, bring your feet close. Make the big heart shape movement again. Breathe in. And out, again, a little deeper, a little slower, one more, and breathe in, and breathe out. So just to give you a little explanation of what's happening with some of those exercises, our, our mind functions very well when it has one task, doing one thing. You add two of the same thing at the same time, it does okay. 
because it can kind of get in that rhythm where both, thing, both, hand, both arms, both legs are doing the same thing. Where we get challenges when one hand is one way, the other hand is doing something somewhat different. So this one, you know, you got the circles going and then it's the same and then it's different. Your mind has to kind of like multitask. And you give enough attention to this part and then you stop the thought and it goes to the other one. So it's kind of like a computer. You know, it's got two programs going at the same time. You can't give both of them equal time or equal resources. So your brain has to kind of distribute out the task of what it wants to do. As you get more comfortable in doing that, you can do more things at the same time. Just like your computer, you can do a lot of different things at the same time. The benefit of that is the mind is more activated, more engaged, more parts of the mind, more parts of the body are engaged. If you have just one muscle group doing the work, only that area is going to develop. When you have more muscles engaged, now you get the nervous system, you have your muscles, you have the bones, you have the circulatory system, all these things are doing something at the same time. Plus your brain is trying to manage all that. So for some people it's very confusing and complex. For others, it just makes sense. Everything starts to work together like a very fine-tuned machine. You add on another thing, another thing, until it gets to the point where it, it can't, can't keep up with it. And that's where you kind of have to decide for yourself when you're doing it, in your thought pattern, it's like, okay, that's enough, Jim. I can't do any more. It's a little too complicated. And you just back off on your own. Or you keep adding on as I keep adding on. Either way, you're going to gain from it because it's all about you and how much you can improve from doing the exercises. Does that make sense? Yes. So don't feel like it's you know, something I can't do it. Jim's doing it. Everybody's here for their own reasons to get better for themselves. So why don't we take a little break and then we'll come back in a few minutes and try some more stuff.